David, the Miami Hurricanes are going to take a big task on hand at number four, Florida State. A lot of talk usually is about that game. You know, can essentially in this one, can Miami pull off the upset? But all the talk right now is just about the quarterback situation at Miami. Tyler Van Dyke's not playing well. I think we all see it. The interceptions are high. Uh, he's one of the top guys in the country at throwing interceptions right now. It's not look good. You know, it's interesting hearing the comments from Coach and uh, Coach Cristobal and Coach Dawson about that. I'll, I'll I'll play some of that for some people that didn't get to hear it. David, what what we're we're going to ask a simple question: What should Miami do at quarterback just for this week? We can get into maybe the future later, but just this week, what do you think Miami should do at quarterback? I've got my own thoughts. I'm curious to hear what you what you think Miami should do, not what what they what we think they will do, but what do you think they should do? I think you number one. I think you have to go away from Tyler. I think we're at that point for those reasons you just stated. And, and look, it's pretty obvious that he is a quarterback right now that's devoid of confidence. Um, I think Shannon Dawson, the, the offensive coordinator, has done a nice job. Or whether or not you agree with it, he's allowed Tyler to try and work his way out of this funk that he's in in terms since ACC play. Turnovers have been an issue for Tyler. And we're now at the point, I think, where it's like, look, um, either you're going to fix it or I'm going to have to fix it for you as a coach by benching you. And so unfortunately for Tyler, I just think we're at that point. And look, for me personally, the way I would go, again, this is not what I think will necessarily happen, but I, I do think it's time to give Jakari Brown a look the sophomore quarterback that now has a red shirt for this year intact. Uh, there are hypothetically four games remaining on the schedule, including the bowl game. So he can play in all these four games and you see what you got. And we can get into it here later, Chris, but I just think, you know, number one, to me, this is a big Shannon Dawson game to me. Number one, you got, I think you have to make the right quarterback decision, whatever that is. Number two, whoever that quarterback is that you go with you have to put the best game plan possible for that quarterback to succeed. And to me, that's where I'm, that's where like, I would like to see Jakari, but I'm not convinced the staff is willing to give him the tools necessary in terms of game plan and, uh, you know, lean into his strengths in week 10 of a season to really go all in on him, see him. Like what I would do is I'd see him for a half, See what you got. If he performed well in the half, okay, you finish the second half. If not, okay, we got to go in a different direction, whether that's Emery. I would probably go Emery after that or even Tyler. But big picture-wise, that's just where I would go. Yeah, it's interesting. And I think I, I say this all the time. Uh, for me, it's the head coach. I, I think it's one of the biggest decisions. Uh, when you look at a coach for a head coach, I, I think whether it's recruiting, I think there's a lot of factors the way you value or evaluate a head coach, I think how they handle the quarterback situation is one of the biggest things that they have to do. And to me, we're, we're going to see this in play right now. Uh, what will Mario Cristobal do? You know, I like Jakari. I do. I, I wish that they liked him more. Uh, I wish we would have seen him throughout the season. I, I don't understand why they wouldn't have played him at some point during the year. I understand this saving them, this kind of a thing. But now you're in a situation where you might have to play him. And I wish that we had seen Jakari at some point, you know, even the Bethune-Cookman game, you know, get in there. What does it look like? I think without question, the staff has shown you that they believe in Emory Williams. Uh, with with the playing time, he got the start against Clemson. And I think one, two, uh, one thing also with Jakari, I wish he had performed better in the two open situations that we've seen in 2023. He didn't look good in the spring game, 9 to 17, 74 yards. You know, he's running – you know, he's not running a lot in those. And then in the hard rock scrimmage in, in the preseason there in August, 7 to 16, 57 yards, outplayed by both quarterbacks. And I wish that we had that uh, those two situations were, were better uh, with Chikar. I, I wish that had happened. I wish this offense was more geared towards him where it just felt like, you know, that you would go with it. And that being said, I would go with Tyler Van Dyke this, this game. And I know that that's not the popular pick. I understand that he's not playing well, and certainly 100%, he cannot play the way he's played the last two games. Uh, he cannot do that, and if he does, Miami's going to get rolled once again in this rivalry game. It was 45-3, if you remember last year, Tyler did get the start. He played three and a half series. He does get a field goal there, and then he comes out with the injury. They they kind of split time between Jake 
and Jakari, you know, uh, the rest of the game, it gets out of hand. They don't score any more points. I, I've seen Jakari against Florida State. I, I understand the intrigue of Jakari. Again, I just think with Tyler, I, I'm just thinking of it this way. Tyler at his best. When Tyler plays well, and we've seen it. We've seen it this year. You know, we saw it against Texas A&M earlier this year, 374 yards, the five touchdowns, the no interceptions. We've seen him play well. Even North Carolina got it going nearly 400 yards and four touchdowns. This is just a few games ago. And it, he's not played well in these last two games after coming off the injury where he sits out there against Clemson. And if he's hurt, then I think that's a different conversation. But if we're taking him for what the coach's word, if that he's okay physically, I think they got to find a way to, to get the most out of him. I think you got to instill confidence in him, whatever that might be. I, I think that for Miami's best chance to winning this game, to pull off this upset, I still think it's Tyler. And I understand you're not going to do that if he throws five interceptions like he has in the last two games and under 200 yards. That's going to be very hard to win this game. You can't get that Tyler. You've got to find a way uh, to to get more out of Tyler. And he's got to play better. You know, there, there's no doubt about it, but I, I would stick with Tyler um, for, for for those reasons. Yeah, and I look, I think there is a case to be made for Tyler, and you are making that case in terms of, I think, a fully healthy, fully confident Tyler Van Dyke is Miami's best quarterback option. I just don't think Tyler is healthy, and I don't think he's confident at all. And to me, the, the, the most concerning trend with Tyler's interceptions is 10 of his 11 picks have come while operating in a clean pocket. And when that's the case, it comes down to either one of two things. Either your receivers aren't getting separation, aren't getting open, or your quarterback just can't read zone coverages. And it, and right now, the book is out on Tyler Van Dyke in terms of you drop various zone coverages, he is unable to read them. And Florida State is a man coverage team primarily. So that is something interesting to wonder about. I would expect against Tyler, they would switch things up and go to a bunch of zone coverages. Um, but to me, he just looks like a quarterback that is not confident. And the football field, to me, is no place for anyone at any position that is not playing with confidence. Um, in terms of your Jakari points, I think they're all fair in terms of like the spring game didn't go well. The scrimmage we got to watch did not go well. I think the counterpoint to that would be you have to build an offense that accentu accentuates his strengths. Just like it would be silly to ask Emory Williams and Tyler Van Dyke to run a ton of zone read or RPO, it's silly to ask Jakari to operate only as a drop back passer, which is what he does in those situations because, of course, quarterbacks are not live in practices. With Jakari, obviously, you work the RPO game, you work the zone read game. You work the quarterback design runs. You get him outside the pocket. You change the launch points. Um, put him in positions to maybe scramble. Um, you know, and, and look, I, I get it in terms of like it's. I'm not sitting here saying if you see Jakar, he's going to go in and light it up. Um, but I do think he gives you an. Uh, to me, the the best path to victory for Miami to win this game is a ball control type of game plan. And right now, that is not Tyler Van Dyke. That's either Jakari or Emery Williams. And last year against Florida State, Jakari led Miami in rushing with 64 yards on 13 carries, averaged three yards per carry after contact, forced eight missed tackles. He also picked up five first downs with his legs. Now, as a whole, he didn't play great as a passer. I think he has improved as a passer. Uh, again, we got to see it in games on the field. But I do think the advantage he gives you in the run game is something you're going to have to lean on this week if you are going to play this ball control offense that, quite frankly, worked against Clemson. Um, and, and we've seen Mario Cristobal lean on that style, that approach in the past, too, at Oregon. Dave, you spoke about confidence in Tyler. And here's Mario Cristobal. He was asked earlier this week, about uh, what he's going to do at quarterback, if they're going to make a move. And here's what he had to say. Just from a game planning standpoint and a team dynamic standpoint, I wouldn't use this form to, to discuss a personnel move, especially at that position, right? Because it affects so many different things. Uh, what I would always say is that we're always competing at every position. We're always assessing and we always make the decisions that give us the best 
chance to win. So again, respectfully, we kind of keep everything regarding, you know, personnel moves and house and type. So you heard coach there. And, and for me, if they're going to stick with Tyler, and again, we'll see what they decide to do. If you're going to stick with Tyler, I would have liked coach to say, look, he's our guy. Uh, we have a lot of confidence in him at his best. We got to help him get better. All the, whatever it might have been instill confidence and that statement right there to me didn't instill a lot of confidence it did say that they're at least evaluating the situation and we'll see what happens that kind of a thing i i think that you know really you know empowering tyler in that moment would have helped tyler now if they're going to go a different route then you understand why that comment was made they're going to evaluate it and things like that but we've heard mario over the years you know just uh the last couple of years since he's been here you know tyler's our guy they that's how they speak they've never said there's really any quarterback competition really uh, since he's arrived you know it's always been Tyler so I think that kind of statement kind of says things that they are at least evaluating what goes on and and David and, and with Jakari in his situation to your points of, of what the offense looks like or what Jakari would need to be at his best I don't think this offense can just change o- overnight or, or this week going into it and that's why I'm a little hesitant with it again if we saw Jakari uh you know, if they really believed in him and if they really played him to his strengths or played him at all this year and we got to see him, you know, operate there, I would have, I would feel a lot different. Just like last year, at the point when he did play against Florida State later in the year, as you remember, he was in packages throughout the year. Uh, sometimes, you know, he did have the start, obviously, with Georgia Tech there and Clemson, but, you know, he, he was integrated throughout the, the season, which I liked. I like seeing that. We've seen that. We, You know, we're getting ready to see Miami take on Florida State. We saw Jordan Travis, you know, at Florida State have packages and kind of really evolve. And I, and I know, David, we've talked about maybe the comp, you know, if Jakari can kind of follow the trajectory of Jordan, certainly that would be a great thing for him as he de- looks to develop. But Jordan has certainly developed since he first got to Tallahassee or or even before that, before he arrived at Louisville there. But it's going to be fascinating. And I think Emory Williams, you know, I think he's a guy that we've kind of overlooking. Clearly, there he's the number two guy. He did beat Clemson. I think if you go to Jakari, I think it sends a message that what Emory did against Clemson wasn't good enough, you know, and, and he did win that game. He operated in a game manager type style. He did throw... He did make some passes there late in the game to win the game. And I think that sends the message also. So I just think, again, I, th- I think it's Tyler. Again, he's he's got to play better. You know, I'd be surprised if he's out there and Florida State does change their defense, as you're saying, even if it fits maybe, uh, you know, going against Tyler's weaknesses. I think sometimes, especially a team like Florida State, when you run man, you're kind of like, we run man, this is what we do. I, I would expect them to do that if that's the case. And again, Tyler, kind of a reminder, last time he went to Tallahassee in 21 there, he did lose the game. They lost by three, but he goes for over 300, had four touchdowns. He did have the two picks, but he did play well in Tallahassee last time he was there. He did. I just don't think that Tyler is the Tyler we're seeing right now. And yeah, look, I don't think the coaches want to start Shikari. Uh, It's just what I want to see. And what I would predict, like, Kind of the vibes I'm getting right now as we record this on Wednesday morning. I think it's essentially Emery and Tyler sharing the first team reps in practice and Jakari is getting second team reps, which is different because he's primarily been working with the scout team uh, all season. So I think it's going to boil down to an Emery-Tyler decision. And in that case, I, I hope they go with Emery uh, because, look, I think, again... This team, not many teams can t- can overcome turnovers, and right now it's just a significant issue, and it points back to one person, and you cannot keep trotting out that person and giving them opportunities um, when they're just not performing. It comes down to performance, and I would fear too. You, t- you trot out Tyler, he throws another interception early in the game, I think you're going to lose this team, and... Uh, You know, I think last year's Florida State game, you know, look, I'm never going to say a team quits because I'm not in the huddle. I don't know. But they looked like a team that quit. And and you can't have that this week. You need to have a team that is going to compete for four quarters. And to me, I think that just means, and whether or not it works, I think you have to go ball control, lean on the run game, put it on your defense, and try and grind out a close game that way. I just don't think Tyler's wired to do that. It's certainly going to be interesting. And I think, you know, the way the last two games have went and really we can talk, we, you know, they got wins there. Um, 
in overtime, you know, I, so I understand the kind of the narrative right now. Miami's sitting at two and three in the ACC. They're in ninth. They're six and three overall. I, I think that they've got to find a way to maximize this season. I'm not ready to do the thing where, you know, play the young guys. We'll see kind of build for next year, these last few games. And I, again, I just think with, with kind of going into this one, I, I think they've, they've got to just stick with Tyler. And again, they've just got to find ways. David, you know, it, it's interesting. I, I think one of the things that, that we could talk for a really long time about if, and really this is, uh, this is why they're in this situation of, of why has it changed? Why, why are they not getting the same production from Tyler, the passing game that they got earlier in the year, you know, just a few games ago, you know, why has things really fallen apart? You know, Tyler's not been an interception prone guy over his career. You know, I touched on it, you know, he, he had, you know, once he hit that seven mark um, in the last couple of games, you know, that stretch there, those few games, he only had six in the previous 16 that he played in. So he's not this interception guy. It's not like what we saw, you know, Ja'Cory Harris, for example, uh, a guy that did throw a lot of interceptions. He did have the yards, but he was just kind of a, a turnover or an interception guy. You know, obviously Brock Berlin covering him. And I find that to be interesting because with Brock, uh, you know, th they eventually made the move off of Brock and went with Crudup, and that only lasted a half, and they went back to Brock. So, you know, it, it's interesting when you get to this breaking point and, I said this before, you know, it's a tough decision for Mario Cristobal, but this is a, one of the big things as a head coach. And, and who do you go with? You know, do you go with Emery? And if they do, wh whoever they go with, they've got to play well and to, to pull this thing off. You know, David, we, we touched on this and, and we kind of joked about the Miami Florida State game and, you know, throw the records out. I know that's the narrative. Anything can happen. So I look back to see when an unranked team kind of has kind of pulled this off. You know, when, when is an unranked team pulled off a win in the rivalry? Uh, was two th or when Miami has it's 2009, that Jacory team, they went up to Tallahassee. Uh, Florida State was the 18th ranked team in the country. Uh, the last time a top 10 team, Miami's won that one uh, when they've been unranked in Florida State was nine, actually. It was 1980. So it doesn't happen very often uh, where unranked teams uh, from Miami kind of pull this thing off. Obviously, Miami's been ranked quite a bit. Florida State's been ranked a, a lot in this rivalry, too. So We'll see. It's a tough situation, and I think it's going to be a week-to-week -week thing. Now, if Tyler doesn't play well, it's a new new storyline against Louisville next week, and you see the schedule here. So Miami has Louisville at home next week, and they close up Boston College, who's, who's been playing a lot better, and it's not a guarantee Miami's going to win the next two, certainly, and I think they've got to find a way. Um, and we'll see. Again, just for this game only, I think you stick with Tyler is kind of my final thoughts for the reasons of he's got it in him, and I know what you're saying. Uh, and then this is the narrative. And I know I've I've read the I've read the comments from the fans. Certainly there's a lot of belief in that, that this is not going to be good enough. And certainly it's not. And, and there and if this is all Tyler is, if he's just going to be a multi-interception guy, can't throw for 200 yards, can't throw a touchdown pass, certainly can't win what like that. I just think this is the one. I think that you can stick with them, figure it out. I, I think it still sends a message to your team. And David, to your point, I, I do I do want to make mention of this assuming like what you said, they're splitting carries. I don't like that. If they're going to go with Emery, make Emery the, the guy announced to your team. Emery's our guy this week in practice. Let him get all the one reps. I don't think there's anything you need to see in practice from Tyler, Emery, even Jakari, that that's going to make you make this decision that, oh, they've got it in practice and we're going to turn them out for the game. I don't think that's the the way you evaluate a quarterback week to week. I, I think you just make your announcement. I think you roll with it internally. You don't have to make it public if you don't want to. I think it would have instilled confidence if, if indeed they are going to stick with Tyler. Yeah. And, and look, I think, I mean, all these teams are different that I'm going to talk about, but I think back to the 2021 game, Oregon at Ohio State. And Mario Cristobal's approach with Oregon in that game was to beat an explosive, a very explosive Ohio State team on the road with physicality and a run game. And in that game, Oregon ran for 270 yards. C.J. Verdell ran for 161. Quarterback Anthony Brown ran for 65. They controlled things efficiently, converted third downs, forced Ohio State to play from behind the, the majority of the game. And that Ohio State team featured C.J. Stroud, Chris Olave, Garrett Wilson, Jackson Smith, and Jigba. So it's going to take a similar type of approach again. That Oregon team, much better than this Miami team. Um, but that's what it's going to take to me. Also, zero turnovers from Oregon in that game on the road. So um, I would assume they will try to replicate 
in some ways, in a big picture sense, that style of game. And to me, that's just not Tyler right now. He's a turnover machine. And to your point, just kind of lastly, we'll wrap this up if you have any final thoughts. But I just I do want to say if they, the Jakari thing, maybe to, to something, if you're looking ahead, Florida State, or, or if you're looking at maybe, you know, if they do with, go with the Jakari thing, you know, kind of looking back at the season, Florida State against Boston College, that two-point win that they they squeaked out. Boston College, you know, Thomas Castellanos, who I think is one of the best eight quarterbacks in the ACC. I think he's definitely up there in there. You know, he goes for just over 300 yards. Uh, he had 95 yards rushing, a dual-threat quarterback. So maybe if you're looking for something, some maybe some signs of a good, very good Florida State defense, they were a little bit vulnerable in that one because of the dual threat play of the quarterback of Castellanos. So if you're looking for a Jakari kind of point, there's one there. Like I said, uh, no doubt they've got to get good quarterback play and we'll see how it all plays out. Any, any final thoughts, David, uh, before we wrap this up? And I know everyone's got their comments. Definitely drop below. Let us know what you think. And we're talking a lot about Tyler and Jakari. Are we not talking enough about Emory? Because certainly that is an option as well. And I'm sure many of you would like to see Emory. Maybe you liked yeah. what you saw in the true freshman there as well. I'm not against Emory either. Uh, I just selfishly do want to see Jakari. But I think if they go the Emory route, I'm fine with that. And, you know, look, it's it's one of those situations where Emory showed against Clemson that he can protect the football. He did have that one interception. I put that interception on Jacoby George for breaking off a, a post route way too early. Um, but Emery showed he could protect the football. And as they gave him more and more and more to operate as the game progressed, he did show up somewhat in the fourth quarter. Now, if you give, you know, if you give him more to work with for out, throughout a whole game, can he still be as effective? That's the big question he has to answer. And and of course, too, this is a road environment compared to playing at Hard Rock Stadium against Clemson, which is different too. But um, personally, like I want to see Jakari, uh, but if if they go with Emery, I'm kind of hoping to see a Jakari package with that um, and just kind of Frankenstein a game plan that helps you control the ball try and keep the ball out of an explosive Florida State's offense hands and and see where the chips fall in the fourth quarter. I think that's Miami's best chance to to pull it out. And look, to the point earlier, ultimately, this comes down to the coaching decisions. Mario Cristobal, Shannon Dawson, and whoever they go with, they're going to have to answer questions, good or bad, about how the performance goes by the quarterback they decide to roll with. So it'll be very interesting in that regard. Yeah, and hopefully we're not sitting here in a few weeks saying this was a very disappointing end of November. Hopefully Miami can get some wins here, feel better about themselves, and, and finish the season strong. Again, there's regardless of how they got here, there's six and three overall right now, and they've got a chance to finish strong. You know, if they can get a win one of these next two games, you know, beat Boston College, they go two and one. I think that could be a realistic goal. I think it's gonna be very hard to go three and oh. So we'll see. A lot to discuss. And, and either whoever goes out there at quarterback, they've got to play well. It's a very difficult team to play against. Obviously, Florida State's on a roll and we'll see what happens. But and eventually, you know, Miami's got to beat Florida State, you know, so we'll see when that can happen. Um obviously you don't want to go into too long of a stretch with not beating them. It's only been they've only dropped the last too, but we'll see the 45-3 loss was certainly disappointing, uh, hard to watch last year. David, I appreciate you taking the time to do this. Uh, we'll, we'll talk to you later.